Hey class, this is Lieutenant Commander Streepek. Um, this video is in conjunction with Knife Nav, and we're in Chapter 5, uh, which is Pre-Flight Wind Calculations. This slide is going to, or this, sorry, this um, video is Advanced Pre-Flight Wind Calculation, because I am, I'm going to be doing the estimate um, on the whiz wheel, okay? And so I want you guys to first uh, study the book in the process behind calculating pre-flight wind, especially the people in this video that are having a hard time already conceptualizing how to use this uh, whiz wheel to do pre-flight winds. If you were at all confused or struggling to figure out how to do it, um, you need to go through the book first, okay? So none of this stuff is going to help you if you don't already understand the process and how this stuff works, okay? But, um, but yes, after you guys go through and know the steps, this becomes part of your estimation process, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, the only thing that I would say is not going to be fulfilled uh, on your whiz wheel is your 10% rule. So I know we're going to be driving that home in class, but the 10% rule is the only estimation you won't be doing on your whiz wheel. Okay? But that's an easy one. If they give you true airspeed, just take 10%. You know, that's the six degree rule. Uh, and you can kind of work from there. If it's 10% if of your true airspeed, if your crosswind component is less than 10% uh, of your true airspeed, you know you have less than six degrees of crab. And if it's greater than 10% of your true airspeed, you know you have greater than six degrees of crab. And that usually takes care of your estimation right off the bat. Um, it's those situations where your your crosswind is extremely high or low, where you'd probably want to do a little bit more homework first, a little bit more fidelity, maybe expand out your 10% rule. But for the most part, you know, if you're in a pinch, use that 10% rule, just the 10%, and uh, you know, go, you know, do the over under thing on it, and usually it'll get you right. Okay, so in a situation where they give you um, a, a wind component, say um, say it's 210 at 50, okay? Um, the first, and, and then they give you a course and all the other good stuff. You're sorting through everything in the problem. When you get a win for a pre-flight wind calculation, go ahead and just put it in there. So uh, 200 at 50, all right? So just go ahead, pop it in there. And then the course, uh, whatever it is, say it's, uh, we're going to do 050 or something like that. So we'll go ahead and turn that in. So as long as you're turning your courses, if you notice, this turns into a wind tee real quick. Okay, so, I'm sorry, I don't have the full screen here, but yeah. So here you see your, you can do quarter analysis right here on your whiz wheel. Okay, now again, this is to say that you already know how to do quarter analysis. If we don't know, you need to go through the chapter and learn quarter analysis. You need to internalize it. And don't spend a ton of time doing it, just get it done. And now we can get to the this stuff, the execution. Okay, so knowing we have a right tailwind, we know that ground speed will be greater because it, see the plus sign, and right crosswind, so our heading will be greater as well. Okay, so heading's greater, ground speed's greater, and you're done with your your um, estimation. Okay, um, next you want to make sure that true airspeed at the top is set. So say your true airspeed was 150 knots, we're gonna go ahead and put that in there. Okay. And then, at that point, you're ready to go. Um, you go ahead and start calculating your component. So, right here, it looks because my let's see my marker is so big, but I would say that the crosswind component is 25 knots. Okay, so 25 knots, 25 knots is greater than 10% of of 150. So it's greater than 15. That means I have greater than uh, six degrees of crap. And sure enough, as I look down, I see that. Let's see, here we go, 25. Uh, we'll go to 25 over here and see. And sure enough, there's uh, it's greater than six. It's actually greater than nine. Um, and it's closer to 10 than it is to nine. So we're gonna go with 10 degrees of right uh, crab angle, okay? So if our true course is uh, zero five zero. Then our our true heading is going to be zero six zero. Okay, sweet. All right. So now that we have that done, um, we also need to calculate 
um, our ground speed. So we have a tailwind component of it looks like uh, 45 knots. Okay, and we know we're going to add it because tailwinds we add. So add 45 knots to our true airspeed, which is 150, um, and you have 195 knots. And now that you have ground speed into your heading, you're done. And you see how how fast that was. Um, so just again to reiterate, you have to know you have to internalize this process. You got to know that there are there's certain things you have to do for pre-flight wind calculation. You got to do your you have to do a quartering analysis, right? Because then once you do that, um, you know that your components will be in a certain realm, either above or below your givens, okay? And then after that, you're gonna make sure, well, first off, you gotta plot the winds, but yes, you do your coring analysis off your true course, and then you can get your components and then calculate using your true airspeed up here and uh, in, for your crab angle and your ground speed, okay? Hopefully this video helps you guys. I know it was uh, quick and dirty, but you know, when it comes down to it, when you guys know pre-flight winds, you can do it this quick, and it's not such a big deal. Um, if you have any questions, give me a, t uh, a text and uh, or text your instructor if I'm not your instructor. And uh, I hope your uh, studies are going well, and uh, get to that jet log. Talk to you later.